do you think what you've been through with particularly with your mum yeah. do you think that has attuned you to this sort of thing and actually going through what you and the rest of the family have gone through it's made you make sure that discussions like this and broader discussions that hopefully will take place on the back of this that's that's something which sort of really works and, and beats inside you i think and I, I've, I've thought about this a lot and i've tried to understand why i feel like i do but i think when you are bereaved at a very young age anytime really but particularly at a young age i can i can resonate closely to that you feel pain like no other pain and you know that in your life it's going to be very difficult to come across something that's going to be even worse pain than that but it also brings you so close to all those other people out there who have been bereaved. So you instantly, when you talk to someone else, you can almost see it in their eyes sometimes. It's a weird thing to say, but I can, you know, somebody's, particularly me, someone's desperate to talk about bereavement, you can kind of pick up on it quite quick. You can see it, can you? Yeah, they want to talk about it, but they want you to go first. They want you to say, it's okay. You know, they want to have your permission that in that particular conversation one-on-one, -on -one, it's okay to talk about bereavement. Because I think particularly in Britain as well, we are nervous about our emotions. We're a bit embarrassed sometimes. You know, the British stiff upper lip thing, yeah, that's, that's great. And we need to have that occasionally when times are really hard. That, there has to be a moment for that. But otherwise, we've got to relax a little bit and be able to talk about our emotions because we're not robots. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong.